Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 362 Written by Pepper Antique Thunk, crack PSSSSSSSSHHHH Five rejoiced as she saw the Petaravian soldiers leap backwards as the cloud of cold white mist sprayed out and then downward, impacting almost directly on the golem's head as it had been winding up for another attack. The top half of the monster froze and cracked as it mistakenly tried to finish the movement. She fired another shot at its chest and was pleased to see the backside of it completely freeze solid as it stumbled around blindly, its eyes stuck in the already frozen section. Hit them with ice and cold effects. She yelled at the soldiers as she scurried and leaped across an alleyway near them. Her goggles showed her one of the soldiers, who it recognized as a massive orc with a quartermaster badge on his chest first nodding and holding up a fist in acknowledgement. Then he turned back to the other soldiers and she heard him yell. Mags, YA heard her. Everyone else, ice rune stones from here on out. Then the soldiers rushed in to finish off the still frozen golem. And she continued off into the night, grenade launcher tied to her back by a length of paracord as an improvised sling. Then as she bounded from the top of a chimney out into the open air of a small yard, something struck her in the side like a hammer. She yelped in surprise and pain as a massive spear of reddish-brown sent her crashing into the back wall of a small refugee house. She'd had just a split-second warning from her goggles saying something was approaching at high speed. But she'd been mid-air and defenseless. But being a squirrel came with some perks. She turned just in time to see it with her left eye. Her body curled in even as her massive tail swung itself in a wide spiral that caused her to spin and contract even with nothing to push off of. As a result the golem crafted spear, where it had come from she didn't know yet, pierced through her left ribs and out of the back of those same ribs instead of through both sets of ribs. She gargled out a weak scream as she flew, knowing even then that a lung had been pierced by the massive projectile. Then she hit the house and it came smashing down around her. Driscoll had just fired a round at a golem roughly 100 yards away, piercing right through the lower part of its neck where he knew its host's head was, when his goggles flashed their warning. Team member Dash, Doc, critically wounded, recovery advised. His eyebrows furrowed even as he saw the golem slowly slump over and get swarmed by the soldiers that it had been harassing. Doc? He asked quietly. Five. Come in. Vickers chimed in over the radio. Then Driscoll remembered that the goggles they were both wearing weren't theirs, but had been repurposed from their fallen comrade suits. Repeat. 5. Come in. Vickers demanded. Suit 5 report. Driscoll yelled into his throat MIC. There was a rough cough. It sounded wet, though he wondered if that might just be the radio signal. Report. 5 said weakly. Compromised. No crush. She said by instinct, which had been Driscoll's objective in using the old command words. Actually. Fuck that. I'm a little crushed. What happened five? Driscoll said, softer now that he at least knew she was alive. She didn't talk for a few moments. Driscoll was about to speak up again when she finally answered. Fuck her through some kind of spear or some shit at me. She said. Took a hit to the ribs. Think I got a TPT. She added. Remove it. Vickers said harshly. Get it out of you. Easy for you to say cat boy. Five shot back. Shit's like. Five feet long. Also I'm wearing somebody's house. Is it made of silver? Vickers asked, ignoring Five's complaints. Is the wound smoking like it's on fire? What? She asked. How would I know if it's Dash, she began before pausing. Oh. Right, werewolf shit. She paused again. No. No smoking. Does burn like fuck. Though I guess most impalements probably do. Driscoll nodded. Having been impaled only a few months earlier, he could confirm that they did. At least until you went into shock. Then pull it out. Vickers said. It's gonna suck. But the sooner you do, the sooner you'll heal up and be mobile. Your body will prioritize the lung if it is compromised. 
everything else is just sprinkles and cherries. Don't think the guy outside is gonna give me time to catch my breath. She said. You let me worry about that. Vickers said. Driscoll get moving. I've got her covered. Five get back in the game ASAP. Driscoll was about to ask what Vickers was planning. But then he got his answer. Boom. B-O-O -O boom. Five you're clear. Vickers said. Get back on mission once you're up. Driscoll pulled up the thermal image near Five's position and watched as a golem, in three vastly diminished pieces, fell apart outside the collapsed building she was in. Let us know if you need help finding a fire exit. Driscoll said. Fuck you Dre eyes. She said before coughing. Oh that does hurt like fuck. Driscoll paused for a moment as he watched her vital spike for just a moment, before normalizing. Then he began running again. The golems weren't slowing down. So neither could they. The only problem was, their numbers seemed to be increasing. Vickers smiled despite the nature of what had just happened. He'd been converted to his new form for almost five months now. But it still blew his mind just what that meant for him. Back on Earth he'd had a few chances to use the M5 in its sniper configuration, and on one particularly rough mission Xville he'd used it in a configuration much like how he had it now. But back then he'd always scoffed at the guys who insisted on using it as a primary weapon. It was too heavy, too cumbersome, and way too loud for most missions. Even the box mags like he had now were usually limited to one per person, and usually required a second person to carry one. 50 cal ammo was heavy like that. But in this world? With its bottomless bags? And with him capable of holding the thing like a pistol if he really wanted to? Hell, he could hold it sideways like some old school gangbanger with an Uzi if he so desired. And in his mind those facts opened a world of tactical possibilities, as he watched the golem fall apart through the sniper scope that was still attached to the weapon's top rail. Then he heard a series of screams only a few streets over and sprinted that way, bounding over the nighttime roofs like some kind of ninja as he put the massive weapon back in its bottomless bag. He came to the remnants of a collapsed building at nearly 60 miles per hour to see several mags flying around a pair of golems, one of which had a soldier's limp form. Vickers leapt off the building in an arc that would have him coming in at the golems like a mortar round. Ice formed on his claws as he soared. Incoming. He yelled at the apex of his leap, drawing the attention of the two monsters away from the soldiers, and towards him. And, despite his desire to resist his animal instincts, the navy seal roared as he neared impact. Velyrie staggered as she emerged from the door in the castle's new, long-distance travel room and was immediately surprised at the amount of commotion that seemed to be going on. The guards in the room jumped as they saw the door first open, then expel one of the king's archmags. Archmage! One of them exclaimed as she picked herself up and dusted herself off a bit. Perfect timing. It is? She asked curiously. Can it not wait one night? What's going on? There's a battle in the refugee sector. The other soldier informed her. The agency has infiltrated the capital and our forces are engaged with them. Her head cocked as she heard several familiar noises that sounded very close. Are our riflemen fighting on the castle grounds? She asked. Indeed. One of them answered. Some of the infiltrators snaked their way into our very own ranks. The Guardian is leading the operation to root them out. Velyri sighed and dropped the handle to her case. She was tired. She was hungry. Her feet hurt. Her back hurt. The dizziness of using one of the doors had compounded on top of the nausea that her child was already causing her. She was covered in insect bites, many of which she did not actually recognize the origin of because her new powers had manifested life forms she wasn't even familiar with. And on top of that she needed a bath more than anyone in the history of any universe had ever needed a bath. And that was including livestock. Have someone take this to my quarters. Leave it outside my door. She said before pulling her bottomless bag off her back. She'd wanted to go to the dining hall on her way to the baths so she could grab some real food for a change. The king's in his command room? She asked. Yes m. 
the senior of the two guards answered. Have someone send some food there? She said as she pulled a bit of dried meat from her bag. Real food. Not the little finger sandwiches the king likes to have in there. Then she thought. Make sure it has lots of pickled onions. Whatever it is. I've been craving pickled onions for a week now. The two guards looked at each other, mildly confused by the request. But then nodded. Yes, m'm. The soldier repeated. But Vilairi was already flying, literally, through the halls and toward the command room. On her way she paused for a moment as she ran into, of all people, Guardian IRANYL. She stopped mid-flight as the massive elf woman slammed open a side door violently. She was covered in blood almost from head to toe, and over one shoulder her rifle was slung. Though, with its barrel almost bent at a 90-degree angle and its wooden stock shattered, calling it a rifle was being generous. With her left hand she was dragging the battered and bloody corpse of what appeared to be a guard sergeant by their hair. Guardian? Vilairi asked as she touched down. Archmage. She replied, and it was obvious both from her tone and her face that she was both angry and in pain. Infiltrator? Vilairi asked with a nod at the body. But was. Iranyl replied simply. How'd the rifle work? Vilairi asked. The elf reacted as though she'd forgotten about weapon until she heard the question. She pulled it off with her empty hand. Killed more than a few of the bastards. She said. Especially once I started hitting them with it. Vilairi took a deep breath as she took the offered weapon. I'll make some adjustments. She said. You okay? Iranyl nodded. Bitch stabbed me in the leg. She said. Gonna drop her in one of the cells and then report to the king. I'll let him know for you. Vilairi said. Get to the healing ward. The guardian shrugged as if either suggestion was fine. Then stomped off toward the castle's prison cells. Vilairi kind of pitied the agency operative, despite their status as an enemy. She'd seen the massive elf woman fight before. But she'd never seen her so angry. Not the best sign. She said to herself as she hung the rifle by its strap from a nearby Trollber Trophy's extended arm. Then she resumed her flight.